like your business is like secret service type of stuff. <laughs> I'd give my phone. If I feel that, if I, I use my intuition, if I feel that you're the real deal, I'll see you. Give me your number. Call me right now. Let it ring through. That's what I did with Lucy right now. I said, let it ring through, and I'll have your number, and you have my number, and we'll do business together. So I don't do business stuff, and I take your picture and whatnot, so I know who you are. But I also have what they call a credibility package. So a credibility package is, you know, say you're meeting with a, a private money lender, and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, what do I, what do I leave behind? How do I put an impression and make an impression on them? You're gonna leave, you're gonna spend your money on, this is like marketing collateral for you. But you gotta think about this. The hardest thing, and everybody said up here in the front row, the hardest thing about this business is raising money. So this is where, in my opinion, what you should focus on is raising money. You'll find the deals, the deals are out there. You gotta learn how to raise money or get our joint venture with a guy like me and split the profits, that's what I do. We'll do a 50-50 percentage. But what you do is you put together a credibility packet that tells a little bit about you. And I've already developed this. So you take my picture out, you put your picture in, you take my company name out, put your company name in. Everything is already formatted. As you start to grow your business, you start plugging in your own projects. But I've already already have all that created for you. So even like on the business strategy, a lot of folks will say, Well, I don't really know, I don't really know what to um, uh, what part of the business I want to get into. I hear a lot of people out in the hallways who say, I want to get to wholesale. Wholesale is cool. You know, you know, I asked one guy, so well, how many well, how much are you making on a wholesale deal? Five thousand dollars, thirty five hundred dollars. Nothing wrong with that. And everybody will kind of that get you into this business will kind of brainwash you and say, well, that, that's the standard for a wholesale deal. That's a bunch of BS. That's not a standard. I've done wholesale deals for $100,000, for $80,000. But it, it has to be the right deal. There's got to be enough meat on the bone for you to be able to go ahead and pass it off to somebody else. And, and, and people will talk about, like, the double close. You know, that's where, that's kind of sneaky stuff because they're going to find, find out what you paid for the property anyway in, in like 45 days. But that's where you're... You're going ahead and you're buying the property and then only to turn around and sell to somebody else. I don't do that. I, if I'm doing a wholesale deal, I'm going ahead and I'm selling paper. I'm just doing the transaction on the paper. So I talk about all of that, about you know, what you should take a look at. When you start taking a look at this business, what area are you going to focus on? What zip code are you going to focus on? Because how, you know, Gene talks about building out your power team. How are you going to build out your power team if you don't even know what area of the country you're going to focus on? So like my agent in San Mateo County, her name is Romana Javin. My agent out in, uh, um, in Howard County, his name is Eric Black. Both the top agents in their area, respective areas. And people say, well, I wanna, I wanna go with Uncle Bob because Uncle Bob will give me a discount. Uncle Bob's gonna screw your business up, what Uncle Bob's gonna do, you know? He's certainly not gonna be able to go through and walk through a property, and I, I'll call my agents, and I'll go through my whole analysis of what the repair costs are gonna be and everything else. I know really within dollars, and you'll see what, you'll see what I'm talking about here, within dollars of what, that, what I'm gonna put in that project, but I'll still call up Rumano or I'll call up Eric, um, and I'll say, hey, or Jeff out in Phoenix, and I'll say, here's the project. I got the project under contract. Um, tell me, once I fix that project up, what I could possibly sell it for conservatively, not pie in the sky, conservatively. So now I'm getting their buy-in. The second, second question I ask them after they give me the number, and it's usually in alignment with what I'm doing, the second question is, do you have potential buyers? And the answer is typically yes, because if they are that good in that area, and that's why I don't go with B players, Go with A players only. If they're that good in the area, they're gonna have a whole pipeline of people. When they do show-ins, and they're doing show-ins by the numbers, by the numbers, by the numbers, and they're doing show-ins, not everybody gets to buy that property. Only one person does. That's the unique thing about this business, one person. But what happened to the other nine, 10, 15 people that wanted the project? Where'd they go? Their dream just didn't expire. So all of a sudden, Rumana's calling them up and saying, hey, remember that project on 123 ABC Street? Well, I got another one that's coming up right now. And I got a guy that's rehabbing the project. And what is she? What, is, what kind of intel is she able to give me? She's able to tell me, is this a cash buyer? She's able to tell me, what, what did they qualify for? I already have that work done. You know, Gene asked me early on when I started doing this, I got him into this business. He says, you know, what days do you go ahead and start, um, you know, uh, promoting your projects? I said, the last phase of my construction, I have my guys doing private showings on qualified, qualified buyers people that are serious. And how do they know they're serious? Because they've been through showings before and they didn't get the property. So there's all types of ways to skin this cat. So I go, I go through uh, action plan for building out your team, who should be on your team, uh, developing a strong buyers list. Have any of you ever called um, the, the We Buy Ugly Homes? Yeah. Have you ever called that? All the time, right? Now why are you calling them for? They have deals. But the other thing is this, they have deals is one, but the other thing is, is that if you think about this, and you want to get this business off the ground quickly, you listen to what I'm saying. You're calling them up and you're interviewing them. You say, hey, this is Bruce Stinger. I'm an investor. I represent BKD Ventures. I saw your sign. I want to be able to go ahead and meet with you for coffee, or we do a Zoom call. A lot of times I do Zoom calls because I don't like leaving the house. And I'll say, 
let's go, I wanna find out what your criteria is. I wanna find out what type of homes that you're buying, what zip codes are you buying in, what really turns you on, and what is the, what is the, 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 the money that you're, that you're paying for these properties? Because now all of a sudden you do what we call like reverse wholesale and deals, where you already got your buyers lined up. So people don't think about those things. Auctions, people talk about auctions all the time to go and buy homes. It's a competitive environment, but I, I do go to auctions. I send my team out to auctions for what? For the purpose of being able to go ahead and meet with who? Buyers. Because when you go to an auction, what do you have to have? You have, to have cash, they have their certified cashier's checks. So all of a sudden I'm walking up, what's your name? Carol, I say, hey Carol, my name's Bruce Singer. I saw you get, kind of got that sad look on your face because you didn't get the property you were really for, right? She's got money in her pocket, but she didn't get the property. I said, we should go ahead and meet sometime and talk about what it is that you're looking for. And all of a sudden I'm building up my, my money list. Do you guys, do you guys follow what I'm saying? It's not that difficult. The big thing that stops people is they say, oh, I don't have enough cash to do this property. Who says you have to use your own cash? Use Carol's cash, she's got money, right? These are the things you gotta take a look at. So I've, I've developed all these things, the roadmap. People say, well, I've never done this business before, Bruce. I'm new to this business. So I've developed, I put together a step-by-step -step action plan. So this talks about accelerating your business. These are six steps, business foundation, building out your team, being able to take a look at property evaluation, writing deals, marketing, raising private money, scripts for doing that. I've written a book on, on, on the same topics, on being able to take a look and take your business, the roadmap to taking it to a whole another level. I originally started doing this, putting it together for my kids. I do very, very well in the markets. Lucy knows that, because she was one of my students years ago. And I do very, very well in the markets. The markets crashed 800 points, I was, my accounts were green. But it's, it's about knowing what, what you're doing. So I always question myself, as I, I thought to myself, am I, am I the Bruce Lee of the financial markets? Is this something that I'm gonna be able to pass on to my kids? I don't know that, because the markets, you have to really understand human behavior. A lot of people will take a look at me and they'll say, you must be really good at finance. I'm good with money, because I understand money. But I'm better at human psychology, human behavior. And that's what the markets are all about. But I always wondered, in my, in my mind, I thought to myself, can I teach my kids to do what I'm doing? Or is it just kind of like genetic, it's something, a gift that I have. So real estate, I thought, that's easy to do. Real estate's really not that difficult to do. If you follow a system, a blueprint on how to do real estate investing, you can get this business off the ground very, very quickly. I mean, you think about this. We're approaching August. We have what, September, October, November, December, four months left. Four months is a lifetime, is it not, Linda, in our business? A lifetime. You could, you could bang out a deal, and people say, you'll hear people say all the time, I'm not gonna teach you how to get rich quick. I don't wanna say, you're, I'm not gonna say you're gonna get wealthy quick, but I'm not gonna say you're not gonna get wealthy quick either. Because this is right? right. This is a business where you can go ahead and bang out. All of a sudden, you do one deal, the right deal, and all of a sudden, you're just like, "Holy shit! Look what I just did!" I average about 129 of my deals. Well, 129. The national average is 55 thousand dollars of profit. So I'm always thinking, how do I raise that, and how do I do more deals? It's about having operators on the ground, boots on the ground, wherever you're going. So I've gone ahead and and, and banged this out on the, the roadmap. We take a look at credibility packets. A lot of people say, "Well." You know, how do I put together a credibility packet? I talked about that. I have three of them that you're gonna need for the contractor, you're gonna need for the private money lender, and just people that you're running into that wanna know what it is that you do. These are all things that you can download and, and, uh, and, and uh, go through. Rehabs, building out your team, marketing strategies. So here's the rehab stages. People say, well, I've never done a rehab before. What does that look like? Don't worry about it, I've done plenty of them. So I'll walk you through a stage process, step by step by step, from being able to take a look at uh, the scope of work, which most people don't have. I have things detailed down, and I've just learned this by being around the right people. Detailed down where it talks about skew numbers of the color of the paint. Skew numbers for the faucet, for the tile, for the backsplash. All these things are done, and I've taken my best projects and I've used those. So I've, I've gotten that thing, uh, taken care of. You take a look at the checklist, the rehab checklist. I got that done. Job completion list, got that done. Analyzing a deal or estimating a property, you may say, well, Bruce, I've never gone through and, and done a scope of work before or walked through a property. I have. So I've done the best that I could where I've recorded some of my projects. I put them here, and you'll see this, where this is me walking you through one of the projects. Good afternoon, investors. This is Bruce Stingerwood. So this is one of my projects in Baltimore. Outside, I'll walk you through the outside so we're going of the project, the inside of the project. Exterior portion. I take you through the inside, the flooring, the carpet, 
the bathrooms, the kitchen, everything. So it's, it's almost as if you're walking, looking over my shoulder as you're, I'm going, I continue to do this. I continue to do this to educate my, my, my children, but I also do it to continue to educate my students as well. So people, because it's a scary thing when people are walking through, I've never done this before, and I don't have the bandwidth. I've always, I've always thought about how do you, and that's why I like systems, how do you scale the business? I have 107 students right now, and not, they're not all as active as I'd like. I'd probably say there's about 15 out of the 107, which is sad, that are very, very active in this business and feed me deals and are changing their lives. David Perez out in Baltimore, he's probably done, I'm gonna say, himself has met over about a million and a half of dollars. A 25-year-old kid, so people say, oh, I'm too young to do this. David was 